Hello everybody, welcome back to the game house. Esports and gaming lives on social media, but Twitter, as far as I'm concerned, is a steaming hot mess. You, you never know what's going to happen from one minute to the next on your feed. Um, you could have some, some random piece of, of content show up because three of your other friends happen to follow somebody and that will show up on your feed and you, and you don't want it there you don't have the control and then you get bombarded with with ads that are that are political and people are screaming at each other and you just look around and it's like I just want to play my game I don't care about all this well I ran into somebody on on LinkedIn and he is building out a solution to that problem and so I have with me today the founder and CEO of GameHubGG. You can find that site, GameHub.GG. Follow them on Twitter, at GameHubGG. And he's starting to build, and I say starting because, because we actually talked about this before we went live. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot to, to, lot to deal with. So I'm going to let him introduce himself. So... So, so, Marvin, go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody and, and give us a sort of a fast rundown of what you do. Sure. My name's uh, Marvin Copenhaver, and I am the founder and CEO of GameHub. Uh, we've been uh, developing GameHub for the last uh, few months here, and we're building GameHub um, a few features at a time uh, of what our entire platform is going to be. Uh, we are a platform that is building a social network for gamers that will take a concept like Twitter um, or Instagram and focus all of the content towards gamers so that everything in their feed is gaming related and that not only is it just going to be feeds but have features and tools that will help the gamers um, uh, ease of life uh, improve. So that is what we're currently working on right now. We're building uh, a feature at a time. and. Uh, we're excited to see what the future holds. Very nice. So, whenever I see see a, see see a new tool and a new idea, I always try to get to the core issue, the core core event that the core event for a founder when founder realized that there's an opportunity to solve to solve a problem. So, for you, what was your maybe one or two moments where you're like? We need something better, and I can do it. <laughs> perfect. It was there was, and I think I got two perfect examples too. The, okay. the first example was uh, was getting into the streaming world when I first was entering and watching all of these uh, my favorite streamers stream on uh, Twitter and or I'm sorry on Twitch and on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, I saw a huge like barrier. I, I hated to see like Stone Mountain switched over to Facebook because of partnerships. Uh, so now I had to watch Stone Mountain on Facebook. I had to watch um, Ninja and and Myth and, and Doctor Disrespect all on on Twitch. And a few of the um, a few of my favorite um, streamers partnered with YouTube and stayed on there. So I started seeing the divi uh, dividing in the uh, streaming industry because now I had to go to three different places to watch my favorite streamer stream uh, and they were using uh, Twitter as the go-to platform to kind of point all of their fans to their locations. That was the only place I can go to to see all three of them, all three of these platforms and all my favorite people to watch post updates about themselves and what's going on on their streaming platforms. And I was sitting there scrolling through Twitter and exactly like how you said, I'm like, I'll be scrolling and seeing all my favorite people, then all of a sudden I'll see politics and what's going on with Donald Trump or Bernie Sanders or who's what's the next big thing, or I'll see food posts or cats or celebrity gossip that is like, why is this all in my feed, man? Like, I don't understand. And I noticed and I see that some of these followers are only, or some of these streamers are only using Twitter because uh, because it's the t a tool available for them to use, uh, to utilize this. But if you notice, uh, people like Ninja, uh, who has 22 million uh, uh, subscribers on YouTube, 10 million subscribers on Twitch, he only has 4 million of his fans on Twitter. And it's the same, no matter what uh, 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 streaming personality you look at, it's the same across the board. So 
to me, they're using Twitter as this all-in-one uh, resource for them to direct their fans to their content. Uh, but it, it, obviously, their fans are not using Twitter for this. And to me, I believe that's because it's not focused on gaming content. And that is where what Game Hub is there to solve. Okay, so you're saying, and I want to make sure that I understand this. You're saying that you want Game Hub to be the, the central point at which anybody can find any streamer on any platform and find all their notifications, find all their content, regardless of whether it's on YouTube, Facebook, gaming, Twitch, Mixer, whatever. So you want to be able to see, you want your site users to be able to see all their content from all of the streamers that they like and perhaps some, some new streamers that they could find and you want that to all be in one place, right? Correct. Yes. And, and that, yes, that, that, that is perfectly that is exactly what we're trying to solve. <laughs> all right. So bringing all that together is a large task. The internet is so fragmented. I mean, for, I mean, so you look on your site and you talk about Twitch, Mixer, Facebook, YouTube and caffeine and that's just that's just in this this part of the globe if, if you go to Europe if you go to China if you go to Southeast Asia it there are other platforms there 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 are other social media channels so so so, so there's a lot of integrating to do here so I mean for for for, 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 for three coders to put this all together is going to take a lot of time so like you said earlier, you want to roll this out one feature at a time and make sure that it works. You, I, I mean, you can't launch the entire thing at once because getting everything to interact is just going to be a mess, right? <laughs> Correct. Yes, for sure. That, that's why we are uh, announcing it one aspect at a time and, and we're building it one aspect at a time. And we're just starting out as a startup with five guys, three of them as coders at the moment. And we are building a patch notifier app uh, that is part of the entire social network. So one thing that we want to tackle is news aggregation as well and uh, having your gaming news content scattered across the internet. And we want to bring that together on, on this dashboard that we're going to call Game Hub. So not only we have feeds of like what your favorite streamers are posting clips and, and content and what they're up to in life, um, and achievements they've achieved on the different platforms and, uh, and, and websites. Uh, you'll also have uh, news um, integrated in this as well. So if you see a new, news, new news article from Kotaku or PC Gamer or Rock Paper Shotgun or uh, any of your other favorite news sources, uh, you'll be able to link um, and subscribe to this. And now it sounds like a very daunting task, like it's almost impossible to do all of this, but luckily, the way that all of these websites are structured is they do have public APIs where you can easily actually tap into these uh, resources and direct them um, to the news sources. Kind of the same thing like Apple uses if you use an iPhone. Kind right. Of news. Um, they, you, it's very easy for them to tap into news feeds uh, from you know, New York Times and, and all your other gen generic news sources. It's the same for these gaming websites as well. And we just want to focus on the gaming uh, gaming content. Okay, so your first feature is going to be the your first feature is going to involve well, well, a patch notes. Now, so patch notes are, and this is just my opinion. Patch notes are something that it, 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 it appeals to the individual tribes that are in that game. And within each game, you're going to have your have your hardcore people that that know the game inside and out. You're going to have some people in the middle who understand the game pretty well, and and they 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 know how to move around. And then you're going to have the total noobs who are, who are just picking up the game, or the or the or, or, or the casuals. So 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 why choose patch notes as your first feature as opposed to opposed to uh, something else? That's perfect, and, and we understand. Um, we want to show that our target our audience is what we call our beachhead market is the uh, the esports industry. So that is our biggest industry that we feel is actually going to use this platform the most compared to just your casual gamer. Um, and even using statistics on like uh, Twitch, 
and a lot of the esports statistics you're seeing from investors that are putting out uh, um, large uh, statistical forms of data. Uh, there's about 200 million uh, right now users that log on to watch competitive gaming, to interact with competitive gaming, and to play in competitive gaming. Um, and it's growing uh, rapidly by like 20% each year. So that's the market that this uh, these patch notes will will utilize as well. Even though there's over a prob over a billion uh, or a few hundred, uh, multiple hundred millions that are actual casual gamers that still play as well. The target uh, audience for this platform, is, our first target audience, is going to be the esports industry, and that is there. Anybody that goes to events that watches these competitive games are usually interested in these patch notes. Right. And doing and doing um, customer discovery, talking with tons of gamers that are into the competitive scene and tournament things. This was a big pain point for them as they have to go discover patch notes themselves instead of the patch notes coming to them. So basically what you're doing from a business standpoint is you're focusing on the market, you're focusing on the market that you think will get the most um, interactions right off the bat. You, right off the bat, you're not looking for the sheer numbers. I, uh, uh, I mean, people say that, you know, there are so many hundreds of million, hundreds of millions of gamers or whatever, but you're looking for the, the, the most interactive gamers, which are the, which are the competitive side, right? Yeah, I like to call them social gamers. That's the okay. way I've always been coining them as. The people that actually like to share what they're up to, the clips that they're sharing, uh, like the, the cool tricks that they've done in the game, uh, the achievements that they've gotten, and um, and uh, just whatever competitiveness of the game that they're in tournaments that they've, that they've entered and won prizes. Those are like what I like to call the social gamers, and that is definitely the market that we feel the social network is going to help. Okay. So you're gonna roll out the roll out patch notes. Now, something that 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 I know drives a lot of people nuts, and this is something that we talked about before we we went live here. So when it comes to comes comes to comes to integrating all this stuff, and you want to be the 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 uh, the central point at which the social gamers, the competitive gamers show up, but they're signing up for one more account or, you know, there's, it's, it's, it's always, they're always signing up for one more thing. I mean, I can go through my browser and I can, I can go, I can go into my browser settings and my browser settings and find my password. And I must have, heck, I don't know, over 150 different sites that I have the, have the login information saved on. And here we go with one more site that I now have to sign up for. So, so why, why one more site? I guess what the best way to look at this is, it's, it's I can definitely understand where that can come from, and it could be <laughs> another account that uh, that people use. But for this to work, we'd have to replace an account that already exists and and add a lot more value uh, to what they're currently using. So I like to look at it the same way like Discord did. Discord was just another account. Uh, people were using Skype, using TeamSpeak, they're using Ventrilo for years, um, and it's the same thing. You know, in a way, Discord is nothing really different. It's a voice over IP and chat application that people can use to communicate with one another. And uh, what Discord did was was just brand towards the gamers. Tell the gamers, look, this is catered to you, and all of the features will add uh, little nuances here and there that'll help you in, in your daily life. So what, what these gamers did was notice, wow, this is catered to me. This is this is a gaming application that I can use, even though it does mostly the same thing as the applications they're currently using. So within over a year to a year to two time, they switched over and used uh, Discord. It's the same thing uh, with Twitch and how it was Justin.tv, and they focused on a large, wide audience of of live interaction and doing live content. And it wasn't until they catered it and noticed that it's really the gaming content and focusing on the gamers that they were able to take their audience, narrow it down to, uh, to gamers, which actually gave them the biggest expansion. And now they're doing the reverse where they're starting to go back out into the broad because they have that established, um, established audience again. Now we want to do the same thing in terms of social media. So we have one, a live streaming platform that did this. We have two, a voice over IP and chat application that has accomplished this. We're starting to see a lot of game um, stores trying to uh, to build this out too and become the, the best game store. Uh, but now um, uh, we want to take that place when it comes to social media and social networking. 
when people stop using Twitter for their fan interaction. So they'll just be replacing that account they currently use and replacing it with something that adds a lot more value and benefit to their everyday gaming lives. Okay. Okay. So speaking of, 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 of gaming lives, and this is also one of the things on your site, uh, gamehub.gg, is, is that I have friends, and they are my friends even, even though that I may not be able to game with them on every platform. So I, I, I play PC, I have friends on Xbox, I have friends on PS4, I have friends on Switch, and you're saying that with GameHub, you can, that you can manage your friends, manage, manage, your, manage your friends across platforms. What does that exactly mean? Because Xbox, Xbox and PS4 only now just started getting along, and that was basically because 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 Google Google uh, announced uh, about a month ago that they're going to do uh, uh, their own gaming system. So so kind of PS4 and Xbox like, hey, we should start playing nice with each other. You know what I mean? <laughs> Right. Yeah. It's really cool. Uh, and that's one thing that we believe in. We're jumping in early on the cross-platform agenda, and it is happening uh, in the background and behind the scenes all over the place with different gaming companies. Uh, and what's, what's, we're going to start seeing more of in the, game, in the future of the gaming industry is cross-platform play. Uh, Unreal Tournament um, and Epic Games has already put a lot of tools uh, in their builder, their Unreal, um, I'm sorry, their Unreal Engine, that can... Um, that will allow game developers to start integrating their game to make it where it's playable across platform on Xbox, uh, phone, and PC and PlayStation. And we'll, uh, in the next five years, we're going to start seeing more and more games like Rocket League and Fortnite and PUBG um, that are allowing these cross-platform uh, interactions uh, so you can actually play in the same game lobby. And we are jumping on that bag wagon and going to be starting to work with partnerships with these companies as we grow to make sure that this happens and that there is a platform out there that's going to help manage these parties. So whether you're, you're uh, right now it's getting currently utilized by the actual game itself. If you're in Fortnite, the only way you can send an invite to another gamer is through Fortnite itself, whereas we will want to be the party management system, the chat uh, system, and... Um, uh, uh, the system that will just show you all your friends where they're playing at, what game they're playing, what console they're playing on, and whether they're streaming that game and what streaming service they're using to stream that game, uh, it'll all be displayed with it, like your cross um, your your uh, uh, cross platform friends list. Okay, so we've talked about these major problems that you're trying to solve solve for gamers. <clears throat> but one of and, and one of the major pieces of gaming and the ecosystem in general has to do with content and content creation and content, content management and 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 sharing that because you be and I I try to explain this to, to, to people who want to be pros and they don't seem to understand your professional gaming skills can only take you so far you eventually have to give people a reason to be involved in your community and that that basically boils down to the content that you create and put out so do you plan on having specific tools a specific setup is is there going to be something in your platform that gives gives the something that gives the content content creators sort of a, sort of a leg up sort of an sort of something something a distinctive so since a lot of this is in the future we don't have exact plans of exact what type of features it is but right. what we know <clears throat> is that the content creators is the bread and butter of what's going to make a, a platform like this work okay. we don't have the content creators over here uh sharing their life sharing their memories in gaming and sharing their videos clips tournaments events that they've attended if they don't come here to share then our platform just doesn't exist it won't ever it will never take off so our core philosophy is to make sure that the, uh, the content creators are getting uh, incentives to want to use our site um, so we're gonna have features that will uh, will pay streamers whether it's through creator codes whenever you use a, a pay for a subscription on game hub or pay for an item on game hub whatever any type of monetization you'll be able to type in creator codes that will 
um, that allow you to support your favorite creator. Another thing that we want to focus on is tackling the problem of um, of discovery, um, discovering your favorite um, your your favorite streamer. And what's great about Game Hub, since it will be you'll be able to browse across Twitch, uh, across um, Mixer, YouTube, Facebook, all of the ma major streaming sites. Uh, you'll be able to to see and discover the most trending, the most the most uh, interactive uh, new streamer that week or that day, uh, no matter what platform they're playing on. So you'll be able to have, the streamers will have a lot more incentive and the content creators have a lot more incentive to want to create an account with GameHub because they'll be opened up to all the different audiences. If they're a Facebook streamer, a YouTube streamer, people that are also on Twitch and, and things will get to see what they're posting and stuff as well. So it really brings them and gives them an incentive to want to use, use GameHub and help provide value to them to help grow their platform so yeah so th there's a lot here there's a lot you have a lot going on and, and and trying to bring together the pieces of of gaming online as well as offline i mean i i, I can see a definite 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 need for this in, in the when it comes to the event space as well so there's a there's a lot going on here man you got a major major task ahead of you right now you know yes this is not uh this is not something to to play around with this is something that's gonna take a lot of work and dedication and actually making it happen but i want to say it's definitely possible right um yeah uh, you see it even with facebook themselves they're a huge social network giant but they have tackled so many features in the industry that have helped uh, provided uh, the world with tons of beneficial features, whether it was from a better Craigslist to a better event system to organize your events and friends, mm -hmm. all the way to that. And gamers aren't using Facebook right now because it, it has such a, yeah. a negative. Uh, you don't want your mom to be on the platform while you're <laughs> while you're uh, while you're showing what Destiny Two uh, stream you're you're throwing out there. You right, know, exactly. What, what Fortnite kill you've gotten? You, you want to be with your gaming friends and things. So. It's really repurposing social networks to cater to the gamer, and and it's possible. It's just going to take a, a huge path over years of time to start building it and saying, "Look, we we want it to happen. Who's going to make this platform happen with us?" Okay, and that's that thought process right there leads me to how do you find an investor who who and this is something that I wonder out loud myself. How do you find an investor who's actually patient enough? to see the longer play and realize realize the need i mean that that has to be one heck of a a a a a a a, a, a pitch meeting you know <laughs> that's why it's got to be modular man so you have to show traction and numbers through each integration of your investment so in the beginning you have to show them that hey look we built this first feature of our social network we got X amount of users using it every month with this amount of engagement and numbers. Uh, and uh, we were able to secure some subscriptions that people are willing to support us. And this is the amount of revenue we're making. And if we keep on this traction um, and this scale of exponential growth, then we can get to X amount two years down the road. Uh, so if you give us X, this amount now, <laughs> we can turn that into, uh, we can turn that into this later and then a year later, we go back into the investment, go to our next series round, right. and show them, hey, we've actually grown more than what we projected back then. Uh, no, nah, <laughs> we need to, uh, right. we need to start talking some more numbers here and get us to, get us to that high, uh, high level industry uh, standard that we're looking for. Right, and there, I mean, I, w I, I, I'm, I'm grateful that you reached out to me on LinkedIn. This is. This is an excellent story in the making. I think you're. I, th I think the tool is needed. It'll be interesting to see how you roll it out. Um, these these pieces exist all over the internet. So how do you bring them together? And then how do you make the make the user experience something that is is some is 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 is, is pleasing? Because when you when you take a lot of information and put it in one spot, it's really easy to get overloaded. It's really easy to, if if one little thing is is out of place. I mean, I know that you can get all the APIs for all the sites and all the news feeds and all the social feeds and all the streams, but it's funny how how things things 
either won't talk to each other or how they actually do end up talking to each other. And when you try to make this stuff all, all interactive, and I say this to people all the time, what, what product features you think people will love are often not what they want. And you think that a feature will be just the, the best thing in the world. And they're like, no, actually, we don't want that. We don't care about that. We want, we want this to completely different feature that you didn't really think of yet. And so <laughs> I'm really, I'm really interested to see what you guys are going to do here. So, so sort of, sort of, sort of with this first feature that you're rolling and rolling out now, when it comes to the, comes to getting all the patch notes for all the games, and there's a lot of games out there. Well, what's the whole, 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 whole timetable on that? So we are developing it now. We're about 75% complete. Um, and we are going to be releasing our beta probably in eight weeks. Uh, it'll be give or take a, a couple weeks on that. We might actually finish early. And if we hit some snags, um, we might uh, push it back a few more weeks, hmm. depending on how the testing and everything goes. But we, we have the back end completely done. Um, we're just working on the front end now, getting the user experience down. Uh, and we'll be having that out on both the app, uh, Apple and Android stores. Uh, here um, soon, and uh, if you follow us on our socials, we'll be able to uh, tell you when, when, uh, when that stuff releases. And uh, we'll be adding on to that, uh, plus looking for investment during that time, and looking to start growing our team and, and start building on the next feature, which will start getting into the more social aspects with like timelines and feeds um, that we'll start building in, in, uh, onto the app as well. But it'll be the same app; it'll just start growing, and you'll start seeing all the progress as we start adding the next feature that will up our growth and our, uh, our, our traction. Very nice. Well, you know, this, I, 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 I know that we will be talking again because I, I, I always like to follow the, the way that interesting products are developed. And, and I, I like to hear the stories of the founders and the users along the way. So Marvin, thank you very, very much for making time for me. I know that you're busy when I, I, I understand the startup world very well, that, that it's, 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 it's moving from one, one situation to another as fast as humanly possible, solving problems as fast as humanly possible with as much, with as much, much, much quality as you can fit into that short period of time. So thank you very much for reaching out to me and, and talking to me today. I appreciate it. No, thank you. I appreciate it a lot, Bill. Uh, I look forward to uh, talking to you again uh, once we start getting, uh, once our app is actually out, maybe we can schedule another time. Absolutely, absolutely. Everybody, check out gamehub.gg. Check out the site. You'll see it right there. Sign up Sign up for the newsletter. And, and I'll just say this. You will like the video that you will see right as you log on. Listen to that video. I think you might recognize the voice on the video. Follow them on Twitter at Game Hub GG. You can you can find their updates there on Twitter. Thank you everybody for tuning in to this to 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 what I do here. If you like what we got going on here at the Game Hub, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you see you soon.